Hello friends, welcome back to the SNW audio channel. In the previous video, we discussed the fundamentals of distortion. In this video, we discuss how to measure it in simulation, more precisely in LTSPICE. Given that this is a bit of a tricky measurement, I have split the video into two parts. Part 1 discusses the why of how we do things, while part 2 is purely an LTSPICE demonstration. In the previous video, we discussed the Fourier transform and how it enabled us to study a time domain signal in the frequency domain by decomposing the signal into its frequency components or tones. In practice, doing a Fourier transform in simulation is not possible. What you do is an approximation by using the Fast Fourier Transform Algorithm, or FFT for short. Unlike the Fourier transform, which takes a continuous waveform as its input, the FFT samples the input waveform as shown here with the blue bars and uses the sample data to compute the frequency tones shown here. This is actually a key difference between the FFT and the Fourier transform, and this key difference leads to a few caveats that we need to consider when doing the FFT. For the distortion measurement to be accurate in simulation, you need to consider five things. FFT sample window, the number of samples, the input waveform, amplifier transients, and long time constants. FFT sample window refers to the number of cycles captured by the FFT and it determines the FFT's frequency resolution. By FFT resolution, I refer to the minimum frequency that the FFT can process. Ideally, you want to capture infinite amount of cycles for the FFT to process infinitely small frequencies and therefore approach the Fourier transform. But, as you can imagine, that would be impractical. Number of samples refers to the total number of points sampled by the FFT and it determines the FFT's noise floor and spectral purity. Input waveform refers to the level of distortion in the input sine wave and it determines the baselines for the measured distortion. Contrary to what you might expect, the sine wave generated by LTSPICE is not distortion free due to interpolation and compression. Amplifier transients refer to the amplifier's step response, which rides on top of the output sine wave during the test. This determines the wait time before sampling the output data. Finally, long time constants refer to the amplifier lower cutoff frequency corner, which determines the FFT low frequency noise floor. As you can see on the diagram on the right, I have matched the five FFT caveats with the different portions of the simplified setup. The first consideration is the FFT sample window. It turns out that the frequency resolution, in other words the smallest frequency that the FFT can process, is inversely proportional to the sample window. Therefore, we need to capture enough data to get enough frequency resolution. As shown here, the sample window is defined as the time lapse between the first and last samples, in this case T2 minus T1. Note that a whole number of cycles need to be captured in this window. This is quite an important requirement. Now, let's assume that the waveform has a fundamental frequency fi and hence a period of 1 divided by fi. If n is the number of cycles captured, then the sample window is n divided by fi. Since frequency resolution equals 1 divided by the sample window, then the FFT frequency resolution is equal to 1 divided by T2 minus T1, which is equal to fi over n. And as a result, the ratio of the FFT frequency resolution to the input frequency is equal to 1 over n. Therefore, for n equals 10, the frequency resolution is 10% or 1 tenth of the input frequency, and for n equals 5, the frequency resolution is 20% of the input frequency. My recommendation is to capture 5 to 10 cycles of output data to achieve a frequency resolution of 10 to 20% of the fundamental frequency. This gives an adequate trade-off between resolution and simulation time. I set the number of cycles to be captured by setting up variable FFT cycles as shown here, which will be used by the transient command. Note that as the sample window approaches infinite, the FFT approaches the Fourier transform since the frequency resolution approaches zero. The second consideration is the number of sample points which determines the FFT noise floor and spectral purity. Essentially, if you don't sample enough points, the distortion harmonics could get buried in the noise of the FFT computation, 
The default value for FFT samples in LTSpice is 2 to 16, which is adequate, but it can be increased to 2 to 18 for higher accuracy. The number of sample points, either the default value or the increased value, needs to be stored in a variable. I use FFT points as shown here. Once the number of points is defined, the sampling interval, in other words, the time interval between two samples as shown here, is defined by the ratio of the sample window and the number of samples. The third consideration is the input waveform. First, we need to define it with user-specified parameters, which are the simulation inputs. These parameters include the frequency and the amplitude of the input waveform. To do this, store these parameters in variables and then pass them to the voltage source as shown here. For example purposes, I am using 20 kHz and 1V, but these are inputs to the simulation. Also, I have chosen the names FREC and AMP for these variables, but you can choose whatever you want. There is no hard rule for this. Once these parameters have been defined, we can now further define the sampling interval as shown here. While in the previous slide, I set the input signal amplitude arbitrarily to 1 volt. Typically, the input signal amplitude is set to achieve a specific output power level. Therefore, if you would like to measure the amplifier distortion at a power level of P out with a load resistance of R load, then you can set the input amplitude to be 1 over the closed loop gain times the square root of P out times R load divided by 2. You can see here the intermediate math steps to obtain this result. With the parameters of the input waveform set, we need to consider the input waveform distortion. LTSpice waveforms are generated by calculating discrete points and interpolating data between them as shown here. Only calculated data points are distortion free. Interpolated data is not accurate and should not be sampled. As shown here, the maximum time step is the interval between calculated data points and is set in the transient simulation command, which will be shown in a bit. To avoid sampling interpolated data, in other words, sampling bad data, we need to match the sampling interval to the maximum time step. We do this by defining a variable FFT step max, which will be used in the transient command and setting it equal to the sampling interval defined in the previous slide. Finally, to prevent LTSpice from distorting the calculated data, we need to turn off compression and set the precision of the stored data to double precision. In other words, we need to tell LTSpice to store more decimal places. This is done by setting the LTSpice option plot wind size to 0 and the option num digits to 7 or more. With the sampling settings and the input waveform squared away, our fourth consideration is the amplifier itself. If you think about it, since the input same wave starts at time 0, this waveform is actually the product of two waveforms as shown here. A sine wave that has been running since the beginning of time, in other words since the Big Bang or even before that, and a unit step. As a result, the amplifier responds to both waveforms. The response to the infinite sine wave is an infinite sine wave with distortion on top of it, and the response to the unit step is an exponential as shown here. The combined response, which is grossly exaggerated, is shown up here. Given that capturing data while the step response is settling will corrupt our waveform of interest, in other words, we only care about the response to the infinite sine wave, we need to wait for the exponential to die out or settle. While not very scientific, I mean I could calculate the exponential settling and all that, to make things simple, my recommendation is to wait between 8 to 10 cycles before sampling data. You can probably get away with 5 too if your PC is getting stressed out. To do this, define variable FFT wait cycles as shown here, and then define variables T1 and T2 which will be used in the transient command. As shown here, T1 is the time where we start capturing data after waiting FFT wait cycles, and T2 is the time where we stop after capturing FFT cycles of data. Graphically, you can see times T1 and T2 here. The pink shaded area is the waiting period of FFT wait cycles, while the blue shaded area is the sample window of FFT cycles. Finally, the fifth consideration is long time constants. These relate to the time constants that set the low frequency cutoff of the amplifier and raise the low frequency noise floor of the FFT. The plots shown here 
show the FFT of our reference sine wave, the FFT of the same sine wave after a 10 Hz or 0.1 second high pass filter shown here, and the FFT of the same sine wave after a 1 Hz or 1 second high pass filter shown here. As you can see from the plots, the high pass filters raise the noise of the FFT at low frequencies and can potentially hide harmonics. To fix this problem, what you want is for the associated frequency of these time constants to be well below the minimum frequency of interest, in other words, way below the frequency resolution of the FFT. You can achieve this by either shorting the DC blocking capacitors and hence removing the time constants, or making the time constants huge by say making the capacitors a gigafarad or so. Having gone through all the five considerations, we can combine everything we have learned into a compact setup. First, let's understand the transient command shown here. The transient command takes three parameters, t stop, t start, and t max step. t start is the time when the simulation starts saving data. The simulation actually starts at time zero, but you can tell LT Spice to dismiss all the simulation data until t start. We want t start to happen after the exponential transients have died out, in other words, after waiting FFT wait cycles. T stop is the time when the simulation ends. We want T stop to happen after we have captured sufficient data to do the FFT. In other words, after waiting FFT wait cycles and capturing FFT cycles. Finally, T max step is the interval between calculated data, which we want to match to the sampling interval FFT step max. The picture here shows the entire setup. You can see a circuit with the input sine wave voltage source, the options to deactivate compression and set double precision, the user-defined inputs for the input sine wave, the definitions of the variables that control the simulation command, and finally, the simulation command itself. As a summary, here is a list of six practical recommendations for distortion measurement in LTSPICE. First, turn off compression and store data in double precision. This prevents LTSPICE from distorting the stored data. Second, Simulate an adequate number of whole cycles. This sets an adequate FFT frequency resolution. Third, choose an appropriate number of FFT points. This sets an adequate FFT noise floor and spectral purity. Fourth, match the input waveform time step to the FFT sample interval. This prevents the FFT from sampling interpolated data. Fifth, ignore an adequate number of output cycles. This prevents the amplifier transients from corrupting the sampled output waveform. And six, beware of long time constants in the circuit. This sets the FFT low frequency noise floor. In the next video, we will continue where this video leaves off and we will show the simulation setup in real time in an LT Spice demonstration. If you have any questions regarding the content of this video, feel free to write questions and comments in the comment section below. If you like the content of this video and want to get notified when the next video is available, Please show your support to this channel by subscribing and hitting the thumbs up button. Thanks for watching, until next time, goodbye.